Hello everyone, welcome to your world to mine. Show me yours and I'll show you mine. And today we have beautiful Lila here from all the way from Brazil. And I'm truly delighted to have her here with us today as what she's doing is so extraordinary and has so much impact in the world, especially on the lives of our little ones. So Lila, welcome and um, I'm really curious. What is your work like these days? What is it about? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> my name is Leila, like in the Eric Clapton song. Leila. Leila, Leila. No. I got you on my knees. Yeah, <laughs> you got me on. Okay, so my name is Leila. Uh, it should be written, I think it's easier when it's written with an A and a Y. So everybody says Leila. But with the EI for people that speak English, it's they always Lila. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, also. But, I, but my, my name is pronounced Leila. So um, uh, my work these days. So <clears throat> since 22 years ago, in 1996, I opened uh, with two friends a software development company that was uh, very much curious about how to use computers in education, especially. In these 22 years, we did a lot of other pieces of software also, not only for education, but for uh, e-commerce or quality in building construction, a lot of different industries that we thought was uh, interesting commercially and also not only commercially, but uh, the the kind of solution and the kind of software you had to develop to attend the clients were intriguing, were interesting for us because we are like three, the original three persons of the company. Uh, we are curious people and we like to think a lot and we like to produce in, in, in the background. I am a production engineer, an industry engineer. Not only industrial, industrial was uh, a way to, to say it, but it's like an engineer that is interested in production uh, of services or of uh, industry goods. And this is my background and also I took system analysis in the university as a post-graduation course. And the other two are from computer, computer science. And we met in an environment that were, we were exactly studying how, this 22 years ago, how education could benefit or what they should avoid or what had to change with the computer's age coming, the digitalization of the information. And so we opened this company uh, it's called Moleki de Ideas because uh, Moleki is an uh, African word that uh, means kids. And what we saw, the most beautiful thing we saw about computers, using computers to learn or to evolve or to uh, find information or everything, but especially to create things, uh, this we thought the, the beautiful part is the mind of anyone that takes something like this and creates with the new, these new tools. So Moleki de Ideas uh, is like kids and ideas. It's not like kids of ideas, but kids or persons that have ideas that are creative. And we opened the company also to work with kids at the same time. So we have this uh, the, uh, the, the company is a, it's not a, a non-profit organization, it's a profit organization, it's a, a normal company. We have employees, we have partners, we have uh, suppliers, it's a complete clients. We have, uh, and we have also this kind of relationship to knowledge and to our community. We want to benefit the kids, we think Yes, we agree that the old, not the old system, but the existing education system is uh, uh, not really, not prepared, but it, it doesn't really, uh, yeah, it should change a lot maybe, or it 
it can be not even replaced but helped by other initiatives that are out of the school place mm -hmm. the school mindset uh, so we thought that okay i'm an engineer both of you are computer science i think the to be with kids and to uh, give them tools to think and to produce can be a very good thing so we are doing this uh, directly with the parents. We also did it through schools many, many times. We worked with schools a lot. T today, we, we only work directly with the families. And then the kids come for one hour or six hours per week. It's, it's not like every day. We, and yeah, uh, 1,500 kids until now, some of them for more than 10 years. Some of them are already working here with us. So that's what I do, my everyday job. And now I begin also to talk about this experience inside Amy Carrier's classroom. That is, she's from Boston in the United States and she opened this space, this volunteer place where people uh, talk and are open to talk to, to people from, uh, from other countries about many aspects of knowledge. So marketing, um, self-confidence, um, business for entrepreneurs and many aspects, uh, video editing. And I talk about education, learning, knowledge and technology. So I always have some technology thing to, to show and we talk a lot. We are, I, I have been there to, twice, uh, two Fridays. So next, last time I talked about ideas and interests. Next time I'm going to talk about trust and meaning. That's my life, wow. <laughs> my work life. At <laughs> oh, thank you. That, I just feel into it. And you know what I'm seeing? I see and I'm very visual. So I see when while you were speaking, I saw a maze. But the maze is disintegrating. So it's like what you're doing is taking, you know, when you get stuck in a maze, you don't know where to go to. But from what you've been sharing, the energy behind it, what I feel about it is it's disintegrating this maze that has been created by traditional education. And I really love the way you, you, you have been doing it, that you are not only, I mean, I also come from an IT background. And if I look at it today, if the things that we developed um, for specific niche markets as well, was always outside of, you, know, you went inside to get all the requirements, you spoke a lot to the people to understand what they need, but it, you were still outside of it. You were not there all the time. But you're doing it as an integrated, because you're also working with the children. And for me, that's powerful because I can just remember in our time when, we, when, when our people had to develop new things, especially bring new things into the world. It was very most difficult then to get people to accept it and to try it out. It was only at those times, the visionaries and the early adopters. But I, if I now listen to what you're sharing and you, the way you did it, also more or less the same time, ours was also about 25 years ago, it was that that feels like yours were a lot more accepted, and I might be completely wrong, but it's because you were doing both. You were doing it within the environment of the child. So you understood it deeply. That's most beautiful to do things that way. Oh, thank you. And I think the world is going towards that now, which makes me extremely happy because these different silos that we have created to experience life through, like philosophy and science and arts and all the different engineering, all the different silos, now coming together and technology is allowing us to do that so beautifully. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't have any need uh, of uh, separating the disciplines anymore. This mm. is so long ago, but it's okay. But uh, can I comment about the maze, the image of yeah, the yeah. maze? Because I love that. I really <laughs> love that. And I know you are a very visual person and a very spiritual person. And uh, it's so nice you said that. And I immediately remembered 
because when when the maze is like not there anymore the walls are not there anymore everybody can go anywhere and this is you go together you not don't go together but it's a freedom uh, image mm -hmm. very 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 interesting and then you are there and where, where should i go <laughs> now or you just wonder uh, but i remember that in 2010 we developed for a big comp a big institution here in in rio uh, uh, they were making a knowledge competition <clears throat> with people from all around the world the students of professional training. Um, a, this is a big, big institution in Rio and connected to the industry. And they rented four uh, big spaces in Rio de Janeiro called the Rio Centro. So in one of the, the places the competition was happening, no, in three of them, and in one of them uh, they wanted to show what this institution that is so connected to education was uh, could offer to the young people so what they did was that they took the place and they made one road so in the beginning it was very fuzzy you didn't know where you're going and then it was a very clear way to go and with all the the um, professions that you could take and it was an uh, immersive thing on the on the concept and in the end of that there was a new initiative of the company that was uh, like a f in internal facebook it, this was in 2010 so even facebook was not that used here in my country we had the other one was Urkut, but it was not not like used inside the companies to break the walls and make people talk to each other and to do things so first before 2010 2009 we were hired by the we were we uh, hired by this company uh, to develop for them the digital system the platform for to connect directors and people that were working uh, in, like people not like director and not like the hierarchy mm -hmm. but like the people like they were talking to each other in facebook or something so we developed that that uh, digital piece and it was working and they wanted to show it to to the world there inside these events so they hired us also because they know our history with kids and everything they had an amazing amount of uh, young people and old people and little and kids visiting the space for like four days it was impressive amount of people buses coming in all the time and then they said please uh, show in the end of this road what What's the future? Let's say like this: in in we, when we are more connected, and how we can do together and with collaboration and blah blah blah. And then the first drawing that they showed was like a table with two people on one side and two people the other side, and they all were looking at the computer. How to pick this image? This first first image and transform this in a space of collaboration and will and uh, trust and innovation at the same time. So what we developed the ideas with them and in the end we had 1000 square meters and we put many different, like uh, different kinds of uh, possibilities of digital expression, video, <coughs> uh, e textile that was how I uh, later I met Yuka Kako that you know and uh, microscopes digital microscope science and music and uh, movie making and everything and people were that went through this one-way roads at that point that they called Koine space Koine is a uh, 
a Greek word for the, this talking in the city. Um, this one, 1,000 square meter, then when they come there, everybody could go wherever they want. What moved them was their interests. And then after they came to a point of interest, then they could create something already. They, they were not there to learn how to do something, but it was kind of learning together because I want to do this also. I want to make a piece of the movie or I want to use the microscope now or I want to take photos or I want to play music. So it was uh, very interesting. And then people, in the end, they were connected again because they had the, the teachers with them or they need to go to, to, the, to the other spaces. So this maze, and, and it was like the floor was painted with many different possibilities of going to places, you know. So it, when you talked about the maze, the first thing for me was that big uh, 1,000 square meters. No walls. No walls. It was amazing. Yeah, immediately it went there. And we, we re... Oh, it's so, And we realized, for example, there was one table that we, we invited a guy, um, uh, he's uh, African, uh, but he from Nigeria, I think, and he was an electronic engineer, but he loved to sew. And he wanted to um, have more women connected to ele electronics and then he thought maybe in Nigeria maybe if they sold the electronics would be easier than if they are solding or dealing with tools so he developed a whole line of electronics that you could sew he developed the line he developed the, the fabrics so you could just sew sensors and sew things like this sew a suit uh, so, 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 that's right. So, okay. So, um, we did, and it was so magical also. And I, I know you are uh, connected with these uh, energies. And it was magical because what I, I said, okay, so in his table, we invited him to come from the United States because he was a teacher in Boulder University. We invited him to come. We were already connected with him very much. Uh, because he was doing something that is, was very innovative in 2010, that is to connect electronics and mm -hmm. old uh, sewing technologies. And I had this image also in my, my mind of patchworks, mm -hmm. uh, because I always loved patchworks and I always loved the patchwork uh, collective mind and the patchwork use in the talking and the patchwork what they call bees cute bees that people are connecting and i propose let's make a patchwork there i don't know people were just going and going i don't know if the, some of them were there for 10 minutes some of them were there for half an hour some of them one day so we we put at this table with uh, i made uh, a base for the patchwork and then um, a lot of little patches already cut and the sensors and the lines and the, the tools to make it and you know in the four I made two bases we just only one was made but it was made from from the beginning to the end in the end of the three days we had this amazing piece of electronics, e-textile, we say. And it was made just because people wanted to make it happen and with different kinds of interaction. One, some of them were just paint something and then the other one came and put a button and then the other one sew a sensor and then the other one glue something and then the other one put it there. So. And in the end, it was done. It, I was so like impressed with that because it could be just like no interest at all. But it was like this. Okay, I talk too much. You have no, to. No, no, that's why. That's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my my head is sort of. Hmm. It's like all in my neuropaths. You know, it's when you were speaking about the patchworks. 
in my neuropath, I could literally physically feel all these new connections made at that time between the, the, the different ones coming to do their thing, like you said, some paint, some sew, some do something else. And it's organic process that you co-created in that way. Yeah, we have even, uh, we had the money because it was uh, a good, uh, a very good project and, <clears throat> and a very good business also. So we bought a camera. I can even send you the links after so you can do whatever you want with them. But we had this uh, camera on uh, filming how people moved. So when you say organic, we could see how they moved and they, did, they didn't move like everybody goes here and then everybody goes there and now everybody's here. It was so, and no, no problems. It was, uh, people are really responsible. Uh, sometimes we forget that people, how responsible and willing to do the right thing people are. We say, oh, they're monsters. We have to control them all the time. No, you just make them free and happy and give them something meaningful and then it's it's easy you much just, easier you've just said it you, it's you created this you created you guys created the space for that that innovative environment for it to happen yeah and, and you brought the like you say the frame the tools and the things yeah <clears throat> the different things they could play with and explore with and create with yeah. immediately yeah so it's not that they come to a traditional career orientated day where where somebody would come and speak about being an engineer or a software engineer or whatever but you got to to play with it you got to engage with it you got to do something yeah with it. In, this, in this particular uh 2010 events that is called the coin air and then i can <clears throat> send you links about it it was super interesting because <clears throat> It was like three days of interaction with people that we never met before. Uh, mm. So it was, uh, by my side, it was kind of like uh, almost, I can, everybody of my team were there very close to the event, so they would not get, so it was uh, real work there. And, but what we do here in our environment mm. is that we establish longer relationships with the kids. So they, they come every week, you know. Of course, not everybody that uh, came stayed for 10 years, but many of them for five years, six years, uh, 10 years. Uh, so you can you establish a much more um, longer uh, and profound relationship. I don't like very much to work with the, the workshop model. Mm -hmm. because uh, we did it a lot in the beginning of course but i if i can for example in in summer vacations the kids are not going to school for example so they have more time so what i open here during the summer vacations or winter vacations vacations in general is like you can come more time the, the families pay for that, but I normally I don't open for kids that I don't know. Mm. Only if they are friends and then they come for free. Mm. Because I, I like to establish relationships with the families because it's the kid there. So I don't want just to give it a little. And uh, I think the, this con continues. Uh, coming and relationship that you create is more uh, it's much it's very good for the kids because it normally in this you could multiply I think mm -hmm. I think that many people today they ask how to change education but then they go to the schools mm -hmm. and then they try to make something there and that it's not that I don't think this is a way this is not a way for me and I think it's not a way for everybody that wants gene, uh, to, to do something for the kids and for the humanity and, and to create the future and everything. The kids are, I would say, kind of trapped going every day to the same place. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many things that doesn't really, doesn't should or could be different. So one little difference that I think, uh, because if I'm, 
if I'm going as a production engineer, I say it's really, really difficult to change a system when you are inside the system. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes it's just better to create something new. And of course, not willing, oh, now I want you harm. No, let, let everybody be. But what can we create that is uh, easier? So I think this, in, I, I call informal free learning spaces. Informal because formal would be the formal education system uh, with the relationship to the government and what you have to install in the kids' heads and what behavior and blah, 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 blah. So it's their problem. But no, what I do is like the companies, uh, the companies could establish, for example, like I, I do, I have a company, I don't have a school, mm -hmm. but I have a space uh, three times per week, it's not even every day, that I'm open to the kids of my neighborhoods to come and do something interesting, have their own ideas. What do you want to do today? So uh, what I have here, I have this, this, I don't have football, for example. So if you want football, it's not here. I, I don't have the space, I don't have the interest. Uh, but we have robots, we have uh, um, worms producing comp composting, we have the kitchen, we have a green roof, we can plant. We can play, we have a theater, we have a music studio, we have a video studio, we have uh, a lot of different softwares for expression when you are using the computer. We have a lot of toys that, for example, this one that you saw, the wheel, is uh, ATEC, is a German um, kit. For, and you have to deal with, um, I don't know the name in English of the parts, Porca, parafuso, I don't know the names. But this is for kids that like to, to do something with their hands. But Not all of them want to be in the computer. Yeah. They, they want to create something concrete with tools mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. So we have this also and it's very good for them. I like also to do this kind of stuff. Um, we have modeling clay. We have, have a lot of different expression tools. So you don't have to have them all. You have to choose what is good for you. And the other thing would be the kind of interaction, because this is very important. If you bring kids into your company and then you are saying to them what they should learn, then it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. At least it's not going to work, I think, in the benefit of the kids and the space, as well as if you just trust meaning and just understand that meaning comes with your emotional involvement and then you can really explode in learning but if you are learning something that is not meaningful for you in the moment then it's too hard it's it's too i think it's just a big waste of time it's a waste of energy. It's a, it's a waste of life. Mm. Yeah. I have, a, I can send you the link also. I think you're going to enjoy this text. I have a girl. She, I have a girl. She's my friend, Juliana. She studied with me when she was five to 10. She was very shy in the beginning. She was always on my lap and we were doing things together and she was always and she was very much interested in doing books. And she liked to make researches and then she was going to write something and pick some pictures. She made a lot of books and drawings and everything. And then she went away when she was 10 and she came back when she was 17. And then I, I always loved her. And then I said, oh, and she was, uh, in six months, she was going to the university. So I said, do you want to work here with the kids in this six months? Oh, yes, I want, I want. And then I made an internship with her. And she was working with the little kids. And then I said to her, look, you always write, wrote so well. And you are such a sensitive person. Do you want to write something about this experience of having suffered molecular mm -hmm. diets and now 
making other kids suffer the same concept. <laughs> and she said, yes, I want to do. And also she had every work that she did. She was 17. So she had kept her works because at that time they printed a lot. Today they don't print that much, but at that time they printed a lot. So she had a folder with everything and she kept and she remembered. And I, from my side, I had all the things that I had written about her. Because as I said, I worked like one hour with them and then I was like two hours thinking about it and writing and trying to understand and to make like uh, examples and trying to understand how complex it is uh, to learn and how many different aspects of your life are are there when you are learning or creating something. You have social things, you have technology stuff, you have software issues, you have hardware issues, you have uh, how to relate with the friends, how to react. So it's how to plan. So it's so many, many, many different aspects of learning. So I was kind of tagging all of them, writing about all of them. And this system we developed for years. So now I, I just talked a lot to, with the kids and with, not a lot, but I'm really available for this interaction. And I think this is the big word in education and learning, interaction. Mm -hmm interaction with different ages you don't have to use any of the like let's cut all the kids by age this made sense in some points but it, it's not like a truth in stone you know why not mix but then you mix the kids but you put them to teach each other no 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 you mix the kids and they are learning together and sometimes the flow of knowledge, if there is something to be taught or learned, this is going to flow from the youngest to the, to the oldest, from the oldest to the youngest. And yeah, I think there is a, it's, and, and to end with Juliana and what I think is going to interest you is that in the end of her text, she talked about her, she talked about the kids that she was working with. And in the end she says, when anybody asks me today what Moleki Jideyaz is, I say, it's a place to be. <laughs> uh, it, for me too, <laughs> it's a place to be happy and, and healthy and productive. Um, I love it. You, you know, you remind me of my own story with my brother. And when I was five, I wanted to go to school desperately. I was so excited to learn about this place, what's why, how does things work. And because of our school system, I couldn't, I, because my birthday was after June, so I had to wait a year. It was very frustrating. I would go and cry at the gate of the school every morning when my brother oh. and sister went to school. But we did a very interesting thing three years later, my sister and I. I was like eight. We created the, the, the space you're now talking about, no, no, obviously not the technology wasn't there, we didn't have the internet and all those wonderful technologies. But from our perspective, what we created was quite fascinating because nobody told us to do this. They nobody instructed us, they didn't tell us how to do it. We just started doing this by ourselves. My sister is three years older than me. So I was eight and she was 11. And my brother was five. I used five years younger than me, so he was three years old. <coughs> Uh -huh. When we started doing this homeschooling with him after school, so we would come back from school and we created this whole little play classroom thing in the back of our house in a room, a dedicated room that was available. And by the time he went to school, he could do everything. The teachers were so frustrated because they couldn't stimulate him. And he was bored because he could do everything. He could read it. The Bible at that time, he read from the beginning to the end before he went to school and he read with understanding. So he could tell you what it was really about. It was not just reading it. Things like that. Uh -huh. which was, it was really reading. It was really reading, but he, <laughs> the way we made him write stories and do all different things was just incredible. 
And I realized now today if I look back that we were just simulating his genius at that very young age of three already. And that's why he then got bored. But he is a genius anyway. But it was so fascinating for myself, now from my perspective, to understand why, where does my passion for human potential come from? And there it was already when I was like eight years old. It manifested in that way. I need to go to school to understand, but all kids don't learn in the same way. They don't perceive the world in the same way. And yet you have one system that puts them through like a sausage machine. Mm. And in, my bus in the business world afterwards, I didn't choose the academic path. I chose the business path. And in the business world and consulting world, I also saw the same patterns. Just re you know, um, it was the same patterns was always done over and over again, from, even from school days that in the business world, the, the bosses didn't understand the people's potential and how to stimulate and where to use it because it's so functional and all these little silos and not recognizing the genius within others. So it's just a continuous loop. It's like it never ends. And then people like when they get 40 or 50, they get fed up and they decide they go on a sabbatical or they must go on a quest to find themselves. And we don't need that anymore. And especially the stuff that you're doing with the little ones, it's purposeful. And the word I love that you used is meaning. Because it's meaning for their context. It's not that you imposing something on them and telling them, oh, today we're going to learn about these pens. It's you giving them the pens to do stuff with which they want to do. And you yeah. engage with them, the interaction part. I yeah. love that. Because that's when energy then flows, and creative energy especially, then yeah. starts flowing. That's yeah. wonderful. Wow. Yeah. And all the, all the, it's, it's so easy at the same time. And, but we are kind of created, uh, believing that if you don't uh, impose something, people are not going to learn. And you said, I'm so amazed by human uh, potential. And I worked, as I told you, was a thousand for 500 kids and I have to say I'm impressed with the human abilities potential and realizations it's amazing when you let people do what interests them and give them the power to the possibility not the power even maybe it's not the best word but the, the possibility yeah. the opportunity the possibility the interaction to make in an in interaction really not a, like a manual, but a, a listening. You listen to the other person and you, and you interact with the person because you you really enjoy also the moments in 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 so many aspects of life. Only modeling clay that is very three dimensional. Uh, then I have in 1,500 one that is really spectacular. <laughs> so this was, and also for example, programming. It, uh, easier, I think the, the, the one that we, I saw more uh, genius uh, persons were like drawing, writing, uh programming some of them also i have one kid that works here in the development software that was in since the beginning he always chose something that he could program a little even that we we not even us uh were were really aware of that but he i i know because i i had this portfolio i create i think it's good to create a portfolio of the kids so it's a way to talk about the kids for, for himself, for herself, and also for the parents and also for society. So you don't have only to go testing knowledge and giving, giving grades and giving a diploma. You have really the story of the interests of that person and their creations and the realizations and the achievements. And all the interaction that, that uh, another thing that happens normally in formal learning spaces is that everybody is in the same subject at the same time because it's the way it's organized. I think if you talk to any any teacher in the world, 
Is it necessary? They are going to say, maybe because there's no one, I, I cannot be everywhere at the same time, I don't know. So it's kind of an organization thing. But to you, if you have different kids choosing different kinds of knowledge and working together and solving the problems and solving the things together, one very good thing is that in your network, you know who likes this and who likes that. So maybe 10 years after that, you are going, if you are in a project, say, I know somebody that likes this because I, I saw him going. <laughs> I know he can do that. Yeah. And you have these talents also for social talents. It's mm -hmm. impressive. You see, like normally in traditional environments, also the last word or sometimes the word is with the adult in the room. Always. And I would say that the kids have a lot of better solutions for the problems that normally happen. So everybody wants to use the microscope today. So this is a group job, right? Or not. How are we going to solve this? And they have horrible solutions also. <laughs> Very cruel. <laughs> but they also have amazing solutions. And you have especially these uh, people, as I was saying, that have this... Um, how do you say, this talent for negotiation. negotiation. Mm -hmm. It's impressive. So I, I, I think human talents are, and all the learning uh, system is a big, big waste of time. You know, we don't, we don't need, but we're not going to, I have, for example, I have kids here that are in school and maybe some that are not in school already. But most of them go to, to the traditional schooling mm -hmm. system. So it's okay. It's a, it's a family decision. Mm -hmm. But how many other places they had to go in the city? Only here. Mm -hmm. I, I really think that more spaces like this could be very good for society. It's a way to go. Yeah, you know, because of my own journeys across the globe, but also specifically in South Africa, it was very interesting. I have many friends as well, who is now making the decision to take the kids out of the formal school system. Now in South Africa, homeschooling as such is not, um, it's not necessarily what we are talking about. It's still following a curriculum that the government has approved. But these, these, these parents, they sort of in distress because they don't know what to do. They don't have any other options. And I love the way you're speaking about that. It's complementary to that system. And it is a choice of the parents. It's a family decision. But they in dire straits. They don't know what to do. With, what do they do with these beautiful children of theirs? Some of them I've met. They're really geniuses. If you start playing with them, just sitting with them, being with them, you really notice little nuances of things, the way they do things, the way they walk around, the way they interact with others. It's totally different from the traditional way of, you know, of treating them in a, in a traditional school system. So these, and you spoke earlier that these things can actually easily, the way, because you've done it already. So yeah, 22 years. I have, you, I have, I have kind of a way. recipe. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. don't now need to reinvent the wheel and Somebody else here, yeah, some bright spark uh, comes up with a similar idea and want to redo it here. Yeah. It's for me, that's where the global content, uh, concept on the impact of something that you've already done, it works. You, have, you can show these beautiful children, the continuity of it, where for five or ten years they've been there. And like you said, now you need somebody, you know, that one can do it because they were deeply interested in it. And they were enthusiastic about it, so there's a lot of energy around it. Uh, they're authentic because it's true to them and, and meaningful to them. So I see a lot of opportunities for what you've done across the globe. And that I, it can be shared. I don't want to say implement. I don't like the word implement person. But it can be shared in, in other places in the world as well. Because it's mm. so needed. And it's that when, when I speak to some of the parents who comes to me with these type of questions is yes you don't necessarily need to take out your child immediately if you, if you don't have another option in your area for example 
and you don't want to send your child to Brazil, for example. But no, can, yeah, it but should can, be. Yeah, but you can start with a concurrent process, like you say, complementary process, even if it's one day yeah. a week or, or yeah. two hours a week or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, another uh, aspect is that uh, the the for let's see from the the perspective of my company okay i could normally adults are working with adults and normally i read uh yuka today he said that they posted a, a survey telling like 12 percent of the people that are working in some place are really connected to that place and are really amazed by what they are doing um, the majority is just bored and they don't know what to do and then they this is bad for the company also and the the our our no, normally you don't see like oh but you have a company and you put kids there oh my god so if you don't like kids just don't do it because it's going to be horrible for you it's going to be a nightmare for everybody you don't have to do it it's not going to change your life but if you already like to interact with kids i think it's for us for our company that is a like a small company it's not big we have like around 15 people working here um it's so good to have the kids because we uh, maybe because of the area we work with soft development this is an area that is very competitive so for you to keep a good professional is difficult uh, not everybody can and not every employee is interest interested today only in how much he's uh, uh, what's his salary not only money but meaning again uh, so the the other day I made a, a like a speech to a very traditional human resources association here in Rio only big enterprises and some small of course but I was talking because they, they even the big companies they say uh, what's the how are you going to evolve it's like because they are also like very much like machines mm -hmm. and humans are not so comfortable act like parts of machines anywhere if it's in a school when you are the student or if you're in a school you are the teacher or you, even in a company that you just do the same stuff that you learn to do every day you have this is not so comfortable for humans and so uh, a place where you can learn um in a different way like not only going to workshops or to courses or uh, they say that in these big companies what happens is that you invest a lot of money in the what they call human resources and then nothing changes so be a little experiences in big inside big companies or uh, in co-working spaces or any space any space it can be a house if you want to open like four hours per per week to to interact with the kids of your neighborhood and you can charge for it it doesn't matter the, the parents are kind of desperate to find something that says that their kids are not the problem because this is what is happening a lot uh, from 15 years to our days the kids are being highly medicated and diagnosed oh they don't adapt they have a problem mm -hmm. they are they have attention deficit or they are hyperactive or they are not well educated because the families are not educating the kids and blah 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 and they go to a diagnose system and sometimes this ritalina ritalin or things like this here in brazil even the government bought a lot to distribute because the kids can't stand that anymore but the problem is always the kids and to nowadays i i think it's a little different uh, instead of coming the kid the parents coming saying oh my kid has a deaf attention or we are still trying to find what the problem is 
because he doesn't like school or something, or he's uh, being aggressive or he's being irritated or uh, stressed, then they say he has uh, higher abilities. Everybody has higher abilities in uh, some some part. Everybody. Exactly. Because if my kid has higher abilities, everybody here has, and also very bad ones at the same person. So let's take care. But it's, um, it's an alternative. I think the parents... Uh, 20 years ago, they would love that sh that the kids could have an opportunity to use computers. But these days, they want them to be happy and breathe and learn and be, like we said, and be themselves and have interesting things to learn. And if you go, again, back to the to the company, it's good for us to have kids making biscuits in the middle of the day and this oh, smell is so good. <laughs> to interact with them and listen to their stories and to help them with something. And, uh, and also, it's kind of a playground. Uh, you know, you, you work with business and you know how many business places try to touch innovation. How do I touch innovation? And then they send the person to sit to meet or another place to, to be inspired, but they can be inspired in the job. Mm -hmm. With kids learning, it's a super nice thing to be inspired. And then you can buy tools, not for the whole company, but for that space of innovation. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, normally innovation comes a lot through toys. Mm -hmm. Because you buy like one or two and three, and then you are learning something different so it's really good for the personnel also it's and you have to i think we try what we try to do here is to make a space where people like to be they are comfortable and we trust that if you have a non-stressful uh, place if you have a nice place if you have nice tools and you are doing, you are in the area that you are, that you think you, you, that you like, you're going to evolve all the time. You're not going to be there sleeping or this, what happens is people that are unsatisfied in the job, mm -hmm. they sleep. And they go to the toilet, they sleep a lot, and they, they go out. And they complain a lot. And they, they complain they are not productive, they, they get the, uh, ill, they go like, oh my God, thank God it's Friday and now I can drink. Or, yeah, so I it's, it's kind of a life that is not fulfilling. So I'm not here to change the world, you know, I don't want to change the world. I want to change my life and not to change, to live a, the best life I can with the the environment that i was born in yeah. i don't i know the world is full of different problems but i think this approach that you want to interact with your community not only selling things to them but also opening the space for them to and give new opportunities for the kids i think it's a good a good way to go i really i really think and i i intend to put these things in paper but maybe i will put them in in podcasts uh, first i always wrote a lot about this but i never really the only book i i have is this very thin one mm -hmm. <laughs> But this was Juliana, uh, the girl that I talked mm -hmm. to you about. She took some stories and some ideas of the kids and she made a book with me, with my mm -hmm. stories, little stories. But to talk about, and there is this other one here that is available in the internet. It's a very mm -hmm. big one with mm -hmm. a lot of different uh, ideas and projects that you can do with the kids. And this was uh, put together and it's available in the internet. But I want to make another one with the modern philosophy. 
because I, I see that many people want to do this, but then they, they go with the mindset of the old school. Mm. So they, I think, then they fail. Uh, they, they, if you like, the first thing would be if you, if you want to be in a learning environment, be a learner, mm -hmm. enjoy learning, learn something new. And then I'm always, when I am with the kids, normally I'm always trying to make a new game because I like mm -hmm. to program. And I made games and then they say, oh, it should go there. Okay, so, and then they are learning also, mm -hmm. but I am trying to solve a lot of different problems that I never did before, no? Not that to teach, I can teach a lot, but I, I don't like uh, this uh, uh, kind of interaction. I prefer to be together and he's doing, what are you doing there? And how did you learn to do this? And they, the kids learn today a lot of stuff on the internet alone and good things, not bad things but they know who they should listen to. And I just, I, I can be another one, you know, but one thing is that the kid goes to, to internet and he sees somebody that had the same problem and it's teaching how to do the same problem, but it's not there with him in flesh and bone, you know? Mm -hmm. So I like when the kids come together and I say, do you know that this guy lives here? don't you want to be friends with him maybe you can play in the weekend or something so it's more like i think these places with people real people different ages and especially places that are doing something they are producing something anything like because then you also have this entrepreneurship mindset more activated if you are trying to to um Find somebody that buys something that you do. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good thing also. Mm, exactly. But you know, I love, you know, the words that came to me when you were speaking about having the company, uh, other companies now, not your company, other companies, and bringing in children in whatever way, even if you say like it's a few hours a week here and there, it's the word integration came in, into my consciousness of, in that type of environment where there's so much stress, typically speaking, where there's so much control <clears throat> and milestones that needs to be achieved and all sorts of things like that, is that the children's energy brings new life into it as well. So it can just be beneficial to anybody to, to, you know, to consider something like that, and to slowly introduce it into the organization. And I know myself, with innovation apps, which I have also been involved in trying to, um, and I'm really using the word trying because I don't usually like to word, use the word trying even, but we try because it's you in such a formal environment where people are not used to thinking creatively or independently, or they don't have the opportunity to do it because the processes don't allow it, number one, and all the procedures don't allow it, is that when you bring in a play, place for them, you get this thing of some of them is very traditionalistic they 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 get afraid they feel of fear of these new things that you bring in <clears throat> but it's still adult adult it's adult on adult but i just know even if you don't like children and it's not some of the things that you do like children brings in a youthful energy so those stressful scenarios change and like you say the kids come up and I've seen it myself, kids come up with solutions which adults couldn't even think of. Because the adults are so within the frame, they can't see outside of the picture. They're so inside of it. And that new energy is so revitalizing. So I would also definitely invite everybody to pursue a discussion with you on how you so beautifully managed to do all of this through all these years. And, uh. that, and that they can, I really would like to invite them to connect with you because i think that's what our world is today about as well is connecting each other and we don't really need to reinvent the wheel and yes maybe our context is a little bit different that's okay we can adapt it you, you used to work earlier about education i, I think this this is uh, uh this uh, i don't know if you heard about rehan 
he's from Pakistan, <clears throat> very connected, very into peace. And, and he said one day to me, we met in Oslo in the Catapult Festival mm -hmm. and personally, and he said, oh, you, you should make a, like a franchise. And I said, I, I can't make a franchise because, especially because what you said, every place is going to be different and with another flavor. What we created here was an our creation. But many things that we do can inspire if you mm -hmm. at least see a little light in the, in the, it's another way because, yeah, I think for, for companies, uh, what I see even, because you, you have the old, the old, old, old companies, okay, but you have also a lot of startups, a lot of uh, companies with young people and everything. And if you go inside, again, the kitchen is sad, normally, mm -hmm. and they have these community spaces, normally with some kind of play game, like uh, mm -hmm. they do in schools also, these mm -hmm. bar games. But if you feel like one, at least one space of your company with some creation, creation tools, and then it's some of your employees can just go there when they are not only to the coffee because if you go to a co-working space normally what do you have there coffee, coffee. Mm -hmm. i everybody will say but i love coffee okay <laughs> it's okay to have coffee i'm not against i love coffee also I, oh i love coffee but I can make anything with coffee unless drink coffee or make a business with coffee. I can hear we green coffee even, not me, I don't like, but they, they. but what else? Uh, do we have colored pens? Do we have uh, modeling clay? Do we have some tools to build something? Do we have, what, what do we have there for people <laughs> to distress a little? Yeah, you know, this is the beginning. <laughs> Yes. This is the beginning. Or you have, you know, so what you, the, the beginning, I think it's always like what I like to do. And then can I share this with somebody mm -hmm. else? Maybe a kid would like to be here with me. We are talking and we are doing something together. Not like, oh my God, I have to show. It's more like uh, what you have to, uh, people, of course, especially when they go for, uh, to be uh, sponsored by a um, government agency mm -hmm. or something to the, be, this is okay also we try to do it with the with money coming from the parents you know mm -hmm. that they pay happily and also the money from the company because we invest in this we think it's a good thing to do uh, but if you if you, even with the parents that are paying the money there, you have, it's good to have some uh, register what's happening. Mm -hmm. it, this, is, this is good. And then uh, it's much more than what the kid makes that normally when you go to school, uh, you always see what they make, the, the final results, mm -hmm. and you don't know how much work parents work mm -hmm. and teachers work are there in the final result. But the process, because sometimes what they do is not really spectacular. Sometimes, sometimes it is. But the process, what happens when the thing will happen, how we were talking to each other, what things happened there, what do you think it it was good. They, they tell stories. They, they, they say what happened in the school and they want to be, um, I think we can release the stress also of the kids mm -hmm. being there for them. For, for, and also all the important things like to know what you want to do, to find the tools to make what you want to do, uh, to organize the space share resources, to talk to other people. Normally, when you have any problem between kids, if it's in school, normally they are going to raise their hand, call the teacher and accuse the other. Mm -hmm. So, okay, but we can make it different. How, how, what happens? 
First of all, what happened? Can you talk to him? He's not, he's not letting me do this. Why? Did you talk to him? Is, is it difficult for you to express yourself with him? So uh, I, I always say, then you are going to get married and it's not going to be able to talk to your husband. So please talk. I'm here. I'm here to help. So it's just the interaction. I think there are a lot of uh, little subtle things to, uh, but they, they, I think they go very well when they, I think all the, the things that they learn here, it helps them a lot, even to deal with not so friend, friendly environments because they learn to be their friends also and to behave uh, and to understand that some environments are not so free or are not so, so I think even to even in even when they go to school and they are having problems there, uh, they they benefit from from a place like this that can be anywhere in the world because normally it's it's not that uh, difficult to to do something like this and many. Uh, another, uh, many companies today they have this worry uh, how what what's going to happen with my kids when I go to the company and they people don't have that m amount of money to pay for uh, for uh, school even many many times the schools are super expensive or or uh, crash it's like they care or it, they have somebody to be with the kids. So many companies are trying to establish or to create these spaces for mothers with kids that are entrepreneurs also, like female for working spaces and everything. But then you go, what's happening with the kids? It's boring. Mm -hmm. so it's now let's play, now let's sing. Now I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I truly resonate with what you're saying there because it's not, <clears throat> it's maybe playful, but it's, it's not really stimulating. And it's also... It's not it's, real. Yeah, and it's also still a duplication of what will happen in the school, sort of. Yeah, many times. I saw the, this week, I saw a woman, uh, a little movie on Facebook. I'm saving those just maybe to make, I don't want to, it's not like... A bad thing, but uh, no. Uh, it, 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 a woman with babies. They were babies. They were babies like they were sitting already, but they were babies. And they were in a, in a circle. And I know many people uh, would like and would, would think that this is good for the kids. So if they think like this, it's okay. I'm not the one in the world. But I think it's boring. And all the kids sitting there, and she was going to tell a story for them. And then she kept saying, stop, don't, don't push your friend. Oh, sh stay there. Babies, nine years, nine months. Why they should listen to this story for God's sake. And I know that if she loves kids and if she loves this story and telling stories that I love too, if she has this power, this uh, thing with her and she's in another kind of environment, she would have amazing opportunities to tell this story with kids that are really there for her. Meanwhile, three of them were going to build blocks because they, they are not interested. So why they should be there just to learn to obey? This, I think it's obey crazy things. This is not, I don't think it's uh, to obey, it's like to take care. I have a, a student here, a student, no, a guy here, she's, he's 11. He was, the other day he was uh, saying out loud, uh, I like, I want to recommend this place for every kid because um, we learn here, there are no rules, or oh, there are rules, but the important rules, <laughs> the ones that make sense. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's easier than we think, Hanali. I think mm -hmm. it's easier. Yeah, I it's we just it that complex, we are. Yeah. We make it too complex. I think also because we come from the age where, in, this, in a state in the world where 
everything was so controlled and like the obedience thing that the older people I think the young ones must still be put in those type of scenarios where they must be controlled because they have been through themselves they don't know anything different so they don't trust anything different themselves they afraid themselves to actually facilitate it because they don't know how to they just simply don't know Leila 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 <laughs> <laughs> this was this was fabulous I really would Thank love you. to be able to share all the links you shared after the podcast at the yeah. end yeah that I will can do. connect with you and co and communicate with you and engage with you and learn from you and co-share whatever we want to call it because I just feel now in my whole body <clears throat> that there's so many possibilities and yeah. this is the biggest gift we can give to the little ones these type of scenarios these type of things that you are doing it's much more yeah. meaningful and powerful than the traditional ways and like we said the formal ways can still be there we don't say don't take it out just bring the kids <laughs> Let, let's yeah. play let's play with them and yeah. even for organizations bring the kids in yeah our, our last uh, last thought <clears throat> that i want to give to you and then we can do it again or something if you want it's okay um when you think about education educate the kids and then you think that they go to the same box every day for 18 years mm -hmm. sometimes the same place in the city only that place even if they go visiting here sometimes visiting here the majority of time they are in one place that tries to simulate a lot of stuff in that place so it's kind of not not so real and also the learning society uh, concept you can think mm -hmm. about this uh, when you go learning society in wikipedia or in the internet and unesco they say okay we have the formal learning uh, system already but a learning society should have more informal places of learning that you you mm -hmm. compromise you compromise with the family or with even the, a school or I, I had worked with even with schools with this uh, environment where when they were there they were deciding what to do what do you want to do today this is the the question so it, it, this works even with schools what doesn't work is when you pick the the when you continue to do it the same way mm -hmm. today now see it now listen now it's this is what we're going to discuss oh but i see it i saw a hummingbird later hummingbird is in three weeks <laughs> today <laughs> today is the flower <laughs> this is really horrible it's sad <laughs> not necessary but I, I would say even schools not criticizing this because this was also the best we could do mm. for many reasons so i don't want to say oh no yeah, this is bad yeah. this is bad i want to say look how this is good and maybe we could expand this somehow i don't know i'm talking so much about it that maybe something happens <laughs> no, the way that the, the fact that you're speaking so passionately and so purposefully about it brings it into being more so the more people hear about it, and that makes me excited. So I want to share it all over. So Leila, if you had to have a message for the little ones today, what would it be? What do you want to do today, little one? <sighs> <laughs> I'm here for you. Let's do it together, if you like me. Oh, oh I got goosebumps. <laughs> me too. You see, that's what's important. Thank I mean, you, Hanali. And thank you. Thank Leila. you so much. Thank you and so we're much. Gonna, we're going to do more of this. Um, I hope. I, re I really feel so. And um, yeah, my whole body's responding to you. That's a very good sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, everyone, really, um, I would like to invite you to listen to our podcast more than once. Because every time you hear something different, and try to 
and try to engage with it with a different sense just to get a different experience and you hear something completely different and feel something completely different but moreover connect with Leila we're going to share her details afterwards there's so many different things I want to ask her still about but I think we must do a second one and let this sink into your body and it's so easy just reach out that's as simple as it is and if you have questions the more curious you are the better also we want you to ask questions but it's still up to us to do something it's in the experience itself that makes it happen so thank you so much Leila for being with us thank today you. it will bring Brazil in this way one of my most favorite countries in the world the minute I put foot on Rio soil I, I something happened to my body I was just in love with the people and the place. It was most beautiful. And we're coming there soon again. So everyone, thank you very much. And thank you, Leila. And thank you, Anneli. Thank you for taking even the time to spend with us in this way today. Oh, it's okay. I'm <laughs> here you. for you. Beijo. Beijo, beijo. Obrigado. Oh, obrigado.